Let's take a short break from 3D tutorials to talk about this illustration, which is the latest in the Metachronic series. As usual, it still involves a bunch of 3D work, so I hope you will like the process. Metachronic is a simple story of birth, feelings and emotions told through a series of poems in French written by my friend Arthur Jarriès using voluntarily complex and convoluted words to hide meaning, world plays, and generally easter eggs into the text. The whole project is a really long shot, with no less than 15 poems planned at the moment, and only 5 illustrations were made in the first 3 years of the project in a style I developed using a pental brush pen inspired by the incredible Kim Jong-gi, and much of Jean Giraud or Mebius, or the likes of Gustave Doré. Everything about it is on my secondary Instagram account at alex.albi and by the way, don't hesitate to also follow my main account at alexander.albisser. As usual, the first step is just to read the poem a bunch of times and take out the key elements I want to picture in my drawing. Then I sort them in different categories for the character, the environment and the accessories. Right away, I am picturing the setting of a Roman arena with characters along the lines of gladiators and so on. So after a bunch of reference gathering, the first step is to take a look at the available 3D models on Sketchfab so I can make a really fast 3D draft as quickly as possible. Also, let's do a bit of research regarding the gladiators. The first idea I had in mind was to make a squarish picture with a gladiator laying on its back, I thought that this would make an interesting composition as it is quite different from the other, so I spent a bunch of time exploring this idea. With a few elements from Mixamo and Sketchfab, I could block my scene really quickly and try some composition ideas. Here I was also playing with the shadows to kind of make the characters of the snake and other hints to the poem show out. with a pretty interesting composition, but I thought it was still kind of hard to read and really it was just too different from the other drawings of the series. So let's take all our assets and rework the composition so it can work from the side. I thought of an interesting character moment of having the gladiator leaning defeated against the wall. With some keys, shield and the helmet I had before, then my Arena 3D model from Sketchfab was working great to have shadows and something in the background, but it wasn't really as magnificent as I had in mind. And from the reference, I pictured a really huge arena, so I had to make it myself. I just quickly modeled a section of a big arena, and used an array modifier and simple deform to make just a portion of this huge arena. From the side of the camera, we will see. And now after a day of work on this draft in Blender, I am finally getting to a point I find interesting visually. I still have a bunch of elements to put, like some murals with the storm ships and way more details around the character, but we are getting there. For the murals, I did some really quick tests using me, Johnny and Dali and so on and adding some kind of effect to make a chipped paint. This is just to get an idea of the composition on this side of the character. For the drawing of the ship and the sea itself, I think I will improvise this later when I will be drawing this part. And now, because of the size of the character, 
I don't think I need to make a 3D model of his armor and everything. And it's the same for the other details of the cracks and everything behind the character. So I will just use the grease pencil in Blender to sketch in the 3D environment and kind of turn this back into a draft in the more traditional sense. And here is the draft with which I will begin to draw this illustration. The most important element we are still missing are the snakes, but I will put them along those lines later. I still have a really huge number of details to draw before I get to this point, so it's not that urgent. And now before I can really start to draw this, I need to find a way to transfer the line of the draft to the paper. I thought it would be easier to just print the outline for the 3D model which I can quickly render out and then use my window as a transfer tool to get some draft lines and help me put the element in the right place. As it is the first drawing of the series, which is kind of an architectural model with a huge number of lines that really need to be parallel to each other. After that, let's put the outline, which I usually do at the end, but this time I felt like doing this at the beginning. And now let's finally start drawing. Here I let a blank strip, so it's time to fill it up. Back in Blender, I modeled a series of really small little snakes, so now I need to add them. Here I used a small DIY lightbox to directly ink in all the lines for the seats. And after that I went back into Blender to create some bigger snakes of the foreground elements. I mixed those with some reference with a lot of improvisation to get this result. Up to this point, you saw me use my window, my phone's flashlight and the DIY lightbox to do some transfer, but I guess I could also use the screen of my smartphone with the most recent render if I can just resize it and place it properly to do some transfer more easily. I didn't really work on the gladiator on my draft, so for his armor I had to directly reference a lot of pictures from the internet and even some pictures I made in museums. In the whole series, the character is always the focus point, but this one really is the smallest I draw yet. So I really have to make sure it is detailed properly so it can look really nice. With the character done, I'm back to drawing more snakes, a bunch of clouds, more architectural details, and most tedious of all, the ground texture, which was so boring, I just recorded a really tiny part of it at the end.
but I still have a really interesting part to make, which I left for the end, and this is the mural with the boats and the sea, which was really fun to draw to finalize this composition. Finally, I can make a bunch of touch-ups to add some more contrast to some parts, darken some areas, and make sure I can erase all the pencil lines I left. Now for the usual final step, which is to trim down and make the passepartout so it can fit in the frame and properly frame the drawing. Then I can sign and date everything and put it into my final beautiful Nielsen frame. Now as you can see here, the color between the drawing and the passepartout is really off and at this point I knew I made a mistake. The paper for the drawing was way too white compared to the other drawings I made in the series and it was hinting at a lot of blue hues and there is no way I could remake this whole drawing on another sheet. So later, I had to go back and buy some beige pastels which I could grind into a really fine powder to try and dirty up the sheet a little bit so I could make it more yellow. And in the end, I really think I managed to save this drawing. I hope you liked this video and this illustration in between tutorials. Like and subscribe if you are into that. Thank you for watching and see you next time.